is to choose how God tests us and why. Human beings are choosing creatures. We find this from the beginning of Torah. God gave the person, that is Adam, this order. You may freely eat from every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You are not to eat from it, because on the day you do eat from it, it will become certain that you will die. So Adam was treated by God as a creature capable of making a choice, and he was responsible for the choice he made. The end of Torah also, from beginning to end, the Torah just assumes that man is a choosing creature. This is undeniable. For example, in chapter 30, we read I, uh, of Deuteronomy, I, I, I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have presented you with life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life so that you will live, you and your descendants. We're choosing creatures all throughout the Bible. Here's another one from the book of Joshua, when the children of Israel are about to enter into the promised land, we read, put away the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve Adonai. If it seems bad to you to serve Adonai, then choose today whom you are going to serve. Will it be the gods your ancestors served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were living? As for me and my house, we will serve Adonai. We have made that choice. God assesses us by the choices we make. Here come two passages from the longer version of today's Torah reading. It goes all the way from chapter 14 to 17 of Exodus. We read this account. Moshe led uh, Israel onward from the Sea of Suf. They went out into the Shur Desert, but after traveling three days in the desert, they had found no water. They arrived at Mara, but they couldn't drink the water there because it was bitter. This is why they called it Mara, bitterness. The people grumbled against Moshe and asked, what are we to drink? Moshe cried to Adonai, and Adonai showed him a certain piece of wood, which, when he threw it into the water, made the water taste good. Now look, there Adonai made laws and rules of life for them, and there he tested them. He assesses us. He measures us. He weighs us. He evaluates us by the choices we make. Here's another one from the same Parsha, this week's Parsha, Adonai said to Moshe, here, I will cause bread to rain down from heaven for you. The people are to go out and gather a day's ration every day. They were not supposed to gather two days ration, and they were not supposed to, by the way, gather uh, uh, any ration on Shabbat, but gather a double ration on Friday. The people are to go out and gather a ration every day, by this, I will test whether they will observe my Torah or not. God assesses us, evaluates us, measures us, tests us by the choices we make. Why does he do this? First of all, he assesses us so that he, we, and all others may see what we are made of. Think of the book of Job. A, a wonderful but ter terrifying book. Job is a totally righteous man. Why does God put Job to this test? It's a matter that everyone would see what a righteous man he is and that God himself would be glorified. Uh, he, he's weighing him and he's demonstrating to all things visible and invisible Job's character. As a matter of fact, when Satan comes to God and, and uh, challenges him on this, uh, He's challenging God as to whether Job really has what it takes. God says, watch this. He assesses us to mature us 
through the testing. When we're tested and we pass the test, we become annealed. We become hardened in a holy way. We become more mature. He assesses us in order to advance us in his service. And he assesses us by various kinds of tests. There are different kinds. And I want to look with you for a moment. Testing in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament word for testing or trial is perasmos. It means the trial of a person's fidelity, their integrity, their virtue, their constancy. The term is also used for enticement to sin or temptation, same word. Whether that temptation arises from the desires, internal desires, or from outward circumstances. So this, that's this word, perosmos, and it's all over the New Testament. Testing or temptation in the New te in the in the Brit Hadashah. Here's an example. All these words in yellow here are from that root, perosmos. How blessed is the man who perseveres through perosmos, through testing. For after he has passed the test, and there a different word is used for the test. He will receive as his crown uh, the crown uh, uh, as his crown the life which God has promised to those who love him. No one being tempted, there's that word again, should say, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. He himself tempts no one to do evil. Rather, each person is being tempted in the sense of being drawn to evil whenever he is being dragged off and enticed by the bait of his own desire. It's a very common word. I'd like to talk to you about a couple of kinds of tests that I face, that you face, that we all face. God meets us in a testing situation. Uh, this is the integrity test. He meets us in a testing situation where we're being tested in order to evaluate our heart intent. We're being tested in order to evaluate consistency between our inner convictions and our outward actions. Or we're being, and we're being tested as a foundation for expanding our capacity to influence others. There'll be times in our life when our integrity is on the line. We say we believe certain things. We say we have certain principles. God will allow us or even cause us to come into situations where we are tempted to compromise those principles, to compromise what we say we believe. That's an integrity test. He wants to evaluate our heart intent, our consistency between inner convictions and outer actions. Are we single-minded or are we double-minded? A double-minded person has no integrity. That's what God is testing. Here's an example. In the issue of the golden calf. After the golden calf incident, Moshe is on the top of Mount Sinai talking to God. And Adam and I continued speaking to Moshe. I've been watching these people, and you can see how stiff-necked they are. Now, leave me alone so that my anger can blaze against them, and I can put an end to them. I will make a great nation out of you instead. Now, that was an integrity test. For Moshe. Moshe is supposed to be the shepherd of the flock of God. He had spent 40 years tending his father-in-law's sheep. Now he's tending the sheep of God. And God's saying, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bail out on these people. And I'm going to make you a great nation instead. Is Moshe going to stand up for protecting the sheep of God from this disaster? Or is he going to say, you know, that's not bad. When can we start? Moshe pleaded with Adonai as God. He said, Adonai, why must your anger blaze against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a strong hand? Why let the Egyptians say it was with evil intentions that he led them out to slaughter them in the hills and wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger. Relent. Don't bring such disaster on your people. What a great story. 
Moshe passed the integrity test. And when we pass such a test, God elevates our opportunities. We develop more authority. People respect us more. A second kind of test that God will bring us through is what's called an obedience test. That's where God tests our personal response to reveal truth. It's one thing to know what God has said. You can even memorize it. But what do you do with it? That's what an obedience test is. What do you do with something God has revealed to you? Do you put it on the back shelf? Do you kind of ignore it? Or do you do it? Here's a story. There was a disciple, a Talmud in Damascus, named Hananiah, Ananias by name. And this is when, this is after Shaul has been blinded on the road to Damascus. He is now fasting and blind in a room somewhere in Damascus. And the Lord sends an angel to him, to Hananiah in a vision. The Lord said to him, Hananiah, he said, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to Straight Street to Yehuda's house and ask for a man from Tarsus named Shaul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Hananiah come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. But Hananiah answered, Lord, many have told me about this man, how much harm he has done to your people in Yerushalayim. And here he has a warrant from the head Kohanim to arrest everyone who calls on your name. So Hananiah says, this is not a good idea. But the Lord said to him, go, because this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name to the Goyim, even to their kings and to the sons of Israel as well. For I myself will show him how much he will have to suffer on account of my name. So what did Hananiah do? Did he pass the obedience test? Or did he fail, like, for instance, Jonah did? Jonah passed, uh, failed the, the obedience test. When God first called him to go to Nineveh, Jonah said, no way, and he got on a ship to go to the opposite end of the earth. But that's not Hananiah. We read the last verse here. So Hananiah left and went into the house. Hananiah did what God had told him to do. He followed revealed truth and obeyed it. That's, he passed the obedience test. This is a picture of Eliyahu Dressler, uh, Eliyahu Dessler, a, uh, uh, an Orthodox rabbi who lived uh, in the first half of the 20th century. He refers to what he calls Bechira points uh, or choice points. These are the battle lines in our lives. These are the places where we face uh, a choice between going to the left or to the right. These are the places where we have a little or maybe a lot of struggle and temptation and where we're being tested in life. Uh, these battle lines will change from situation to situation and time to time. You may not be tested uh, uh, in your life by the same things today that, you, that used to test you five years ago. And five years from now, there may be entirely different issues. But these are situations, even little situations in life, where we can follow virtue or succumb to folly. You all know what I'm talking about. Each such issue is an occasion to grow or to devolve. That's the only two choices. You're either going to grow or you're going to wither a little bit. And the question is, which will it be? This is uh, Eliyahu, Rav Eliyahu Dessler's term for these kinds of tests. And we all face them. I face it every day. I would guess you do too. God has compassion on us in our testing. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 
I memorized this years ago in a different translation. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I memorized that 50 years ago. But here it is in the Good News Translation. Very helpful. Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. So if you're sitting out there dreading tests and feeling I'm not just not able to meet these kinds of things. Scripture promises you, yes, you are. God will give you what you need. Here's a story. This lady on the right is Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom was a watchmaker's daughter in Holland. A very simple woman of a, of a house of very strong faith. When she uh, when she was in her 30s or 40s or 50s, she used to take care of, of, of developmentally disabled adults, a tremendously compassionate woman. And then when the Nazis came to power, she and her family hid Jews in their house, in the hiding place. They hid Jews. Eventually, they were betrayed by someone, and they went off to the concentration camps. She is the only one who survived. She tells a story. Uh, when she was a child, she said to her godly, holy father, uh, Dad, I'm, I'm afraid that I won't be able to face the things I have to face. I'm afraid of death. And her father told her this story. He said to her, and she's a little girl at this point. He says, Corey, when, you, when I send you on a train to Amsterdam, when do I give you the ticket? Long before or when you get on the train? What a story. She said, when I get on the train. He said, that's the way God our Father is. He will give you what you need when you need it, when you get on the train. What an incredible story. What a wise man. What godly people. Find out everything you can about uh, Corey Ten Boom. She was a remarkable woman with extraordinary wisdom, which came in large measure from her extraordinary father. So here's something to remember as you go into your week. It is our choices that matter in the end, not our wishes, not our words, not our promises. Choose in each situation, choose this day whom you will serve. Lean on God who promised to be with you in your Bahira points, your choice situations, your pivotal events in life. Lean on him, honor him. Choose this day, the next day, and every day following whom you will serve because it is our choices that matter in the end, not our wishes, not our words, and not our promises. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, my friends.